Hey, and welcome to the Bex Creates podcast. I'm Bex, um, and I think this is about episode eight. Um, I live in Bristol with my partner Paul, who is upstairs getting ready, so apologies for any noises. And my cat Mufasa, who is very unusually not asleep in the chair, he's actually out. <laughs> Which is not like him, we've had a few days of very heavy rain, so now that it's dry, he's actually uh, wanting to go out. Um, so I think it's been about three weeks since I last podcast. Well, that sounds like a, uh, um, AA meeting, doesn't it? My name's Bex and I'm a podcaster. It's been three weeks since my last podcast. <laughs> um, so yes, uh, three weeks ago, I went back to work full time as the, um, schools were opened a little bit more. And things have really changed in my job at the moment. Normally I'm a year two teacher and now I have a pod of 15, four, year, four and five year olds. So that's a bit different, um, but they're lovely. They're very sweet and I'm getting used to it and adjusting my brain to teaching younger children. Um, and yes, we're, we're plowing on through, but I can't say I won't be glad when the summer holidays come because I am shattered. I always say this term, this time of year, I feel like I have two classes because you're kind of thinking about your existing class and preparing for a new one. Well, this year I have three classes because I'm thinking about my ones, my current ones who are at home learning. I'm thinking about my new current year ones who are gonna be with me in September. And I have my pod of foundation stage children as well. So I, I feel like I have three different classes in three different year groups and I'm juggling a lot of balls. Um, but it's fine, it's fine. We're muddling through and all my colleagues are amazing and we support each other really well. So, so it's all good. But uh, when I'm at home, I need a lot of rest at the moment. <laughs> so yeah, it's all good. So there's been bits and pieces of knitting, not absolutely tons by my standards. Um, the mojo was really high just as I went back to work and then obviously the exhaustion just knocked that right out of me. Um, but I got some finished things to show you. I don't actually have many whips at the moment. I've sort of just finished a few things. Um, so I'll show you that and I've got a few acquisitions. So I shall share what I've been up to. Um, I should mention that um, you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Bexy Norms. Um, I've had a little flurry of followers lately. I think um, Jules from So Sweet Violet mentioned on Instagram that she was watching me and suddenly I had loads of new followers, which was really nice. So, you know, if you, if you don't follow me, do feel free. Um, my Instagram is private, obviously, because of my job. But if uh, you just send me a request and I can see that you're a knitter, or we have followers in common, then I'll just I'll just add you no problems. Okay, so let's crack on. So my first finished object is a big one. You've seen this quite a few times as a whip, and I'm so excited it's finally finished. It's my What the Fade Shawl by Andrea Maury, and you'll see it's so big I can't even fit it in the screen. So Oh, I'm just in love with this. It's amazing. The garter bit did take a long time and was a bit of a slog because the rows by the end are getting on for 600 stitches. But I mean, it's worth it. Look at that fade. I just love it. So um, the colours I'll go through really quickly, but I've told you a million times, so I'm sure you don't really want to hear. Um, the colours are deep, scuba, shallows, and Rockpool and Maria Sibylla, all by Mr. Bee's Yarn. And then this, like a uh, cream with speckles, is a Julie Asselin that I can't remember the name. I make a name up every time I talk about it, I think. But you've got the brioche section, which seems like so long ago since I did because the garter took so long, which I love. And then you've got the garter section. And then you've got the tassels. I love the tassels. I made them the other day. I was sitting in the garden. I found a bit of packaging. Paul was tinkering about with his bike and he bought something, some bike part, and it came on a bit of cardboard packaging. And I thought, ah, it'd be perfect for my tassels. So I, um, oh, it's got a funny end there. I'll have to sort that out. Um, so yeah, I sat in the garden and made those. I made one first and it was absolutely enormous. 
um, so I had to slightly adjust. I think I did about 15 wraps of each colour and that made them a pretty good size. I love the tassels, it makes it really just special because it's quite a plain shawl really, the, the, the shape is quite plain so it's nice to have the detail of the tassels. So yeah, I absolutely love that, I cannot wait to wear it but it will be a really long time before I wear it because it's huge but it'd be nice to look forward to. I've got a nice little pile of shawls coming along now waiting for me for the autumn and winter. Okay, my next finished object are the happiest socks I've ever knit. Look at these. Sorry if the lighting's a bit funny. It's a really odd, cloudy day at the moment. I'm hoping the sun's going to burn through. So, these are the Swirl E socks by Prairie Girl Designs. The pattern was so easy to follow. I looked at it once and then didn't really get it out of the bag again. It was really intuitive. Um, I did adapt it so that I worked the chart the other way round for the second sock so that the swirls go in opposite directions. So you can tell. Um, the yarn is... Uh, sorry, I've got itchy eye. Uh, the yarn is Trolls World Tour by my favourite self-striping dyers, Fab Funky Fibres. Um, and I was going to do these as shorty socks, but once I started, I just thought I need to use up every scrap of this yarn. So it does actually have a really short cuff, which I wouldn't normally do on a long sock, but they weren't initially intended to be long socks. Um, and what I did was I knit three repeats of the first sock. And I kept them on the needles because I just had a feeling they might need adjusting. And indeed, when I came to the second sock, I ran out when I got to this pink colour. So I just um, I just tinked the um, first one back to the same point. And then actually that worked it really nicely because it kind of faded into this pretty pink I had for the toe. I think that's a mini from one of uh, Claire and John's sets, which I think was the we're going on an egg hunt one but I can't be sure because I have quite a lot um so yeah that's that's those so I just did a tube like I normally do I put in a rounded toe and an afterthought heel and I just think they're really pretty and really happy and fun so those ones are from me okay then um I think I'd finished this last time I podcast, but I forgot to um, bring it down with me. So this is uh, the Prairie Fire pattern by Tin Can Knits, just omitting the lace. So it's a DK pattern, really simple raglan sweater. This is the, I think it's the six, six to 12 month size. I don't know, it doesn't look big enough for that. It's either the first size or the second size anyway. And this is for my friend who's got a baby due in a month baby girl. The colour is Beaujolais by Mr Bees and it's really pretty. I think it'd be really nice for the autumn. So cute. So cute and such a quick knit. These take no more than about three hours with the DK yarn. They just whiz up. So that's that one. Then my next two uh, finished objects sorry, are another Tin Can Knits pattern. Their patterns are so good just because Obviously they do a whole range of sizes, but they've got some really good, just simple um, raglan sweaters. Um, and they usually, you know, they have some kind of lace or garter detail on them, but you can really easily omit that if you just want a simple, plain stockinette raglan sweater. So uh, last time I saw my goddaughter, she told me she wanted me to knit her some rainbow socks. So I thought I'd go a step further and make her a rainbow jumper to go with them. So I made this. This is the uh, flax light pattern, which is very similar to the Prairie Fire, but it just has, it's just fingering weight. And usually it has a garter panel that runs all down the sleeves, which does look lovely, but it's just much quicker and easier to leave it out. So uh, the yarns I used um, are, this was a second of uh, Go Lightly from Mr B's. I actually named this one. Claire sent it to me and it was like a Tiffany blue and she was thinking of calling it Audrey I think and I said no call it Go Lightly and she really liked it so that's what it's called. So I used that and then these minis here are actually an acquisition as well. These are from my friend Jen at Castleview Yarns. 
who I've known for years since my scrapbooking days. Um, and she dyes the most gorgeous yarns. And she had these rainbow mini sets and I couldn't resist. Can I show you? Like that, I <laughs> like them falling out. They're absolutely gorgeous because they're rainbowy, but sort of in a subtle way. And they've got loads of speckles and, um, you know, they're really tonal, they're gorgeous. And I'll talk to you a bit more about Jen later on. So I use those and as you can see, those were 20 gram minis and they're probably now 18 gram minis. They didn't use much at all. I just did three rounds of each color. I think if I did it again, I'd either do it a bit further up on the raglan or I'd do it the last little bit here. It is in a slightly weird place, but I don't mind and she won't mind. Um, it's going to be so cute. I always do short sleeves on children's garments because I think they can layer it up with a little t-shirt or dress or whatever underneath. Um, and then they've got more growing, growing ring. And my goddaughter does have particularly long arms and legs for a four-year-old, so but she's tiny everywhere else. So that works quite well for her. So that's that one. But halfway through knitting that one, I thought, well, I've got so much of the rainbow yarn left. And uh, the same friend who's having a baby that that jumper's for, um, I know she would love a little rainbow jumper. And I knew I had the perfect um, powder pink uh, drops baby alpaca upstairs. So I literally dropped what I was doing and went up and started it straight away. So here's the second one. It's so pretty. Sorry, the light's not really catching it very well. The lighting's dreadful, I'm so sorry. Um, so this is the second one. This one, I think that one was the age four to six. This one is the six to 12 months. Um, and on this one, I did the rainbow stripe, just two rounds of each color, because obviously it was a tinier jumper. And I just think it's so sweet. The yarn, this yarn is gorgeous. It drops baby alpaca. I, had, I used 150 gram ball and I probably had about three or four grams left, so it was perfect. It's just so soft, it's got a lovely little halo um, and it has come out quite big, so it'll probably last her probably into next spring, which would be really nice. So yeah, I just thought those were so sweet and I'd like to knit a few more of those. Obviously I've got plenty of yarn left, so um, yeah, that'd be really nice. Knit some more of those. Always useful to have a little stock of baby presents lying around. <laughs> some coffee okay um so i think that's all my finished object or objects i can't talk this morning my brain doesn't work on a saturday morning i'm just too tired <laughs> okay so uh works in progress um so these socks i think i showed you last time are very nearly done really all they need is afterthought heels so these are another yarn by Fab Funky Fibres, and this one's called Big Top. These are actually going to be a gift. I love the I love the um, random nature of the stripes on these. It's really cool, where the black and white sort of comes in uh, at irregular places. You know, you've got like a black and white down there. So really, really cool. Um, and I just did a really simple slip stitch pattern which i love doing on self-striping socks so you just knit uh knit three slip one knit three slip one on the color changes uh for two rounds so if the color change starts in the middle of a row you start the slips there so that the slip stitch is the previous color and it just makes for a really nice texture a bit of interest while you're knitting it they go so fast um so yeah these only need afterthought heels so i'm hoping they'll be done by the end of today but really cute little knit, enjoying those. Um, the next one you've heard me talk about in planning for quite a while, um, and I started this about maybe two weeks ago and did quite a bit and then put it down because I got carried away with the little jumpers, um, but I'm loving it, I am loving it. So this is the Fleur Shawl by Espace Trico. Um, and normally their patterns are free, but this one was paid for and it, all the money was going to a charity. I think it was something to do with the domestic abuse in Canada, sort of support during the uh, COVID crisis. So I was really happy to pay for it. Um, and it was only really cheap as well. It was only about three pounds, I think. 
Um, and I've talked before that uh, lovely Sophie from Pixie Yarns dyed this um, colour sort of custom for me. And bless her, she um, she messaged me after I last podcast. She was like, oh, I forgot to put the labels on your yarn. She said, I printed them especially for you. So she actually put them in the post. And she'd called the yarn, I think I've left the labels upstairs. Um, she called the yarn Bex Orange Fleur, which was really sweet. So... Here you go, I've done uh, the first few sections and the first row of bobbles, which I just love. They are so cool. The method for knitting these bobbles is really easy. Um, it, it takes a little bit of time, but uh, there aren't that many bobble rows, so it's fine. And I'm holding finger in yarn double, so it's growing pretty quick. This fabric feels lush, it's really squishy. So yeah, I'm just using a plain undyed um, uh, alpaca silk um, and I am loving it I do need to pick this back up but it's not going to take me very long it's, it's a really simple pattern really just a really memorizable um, repeat and then you know just this bobble row popping up and these uh, alpaca rows oh, my, my brain today honestly um, just those popping up in between so really nice relaxing knit can't wait to finish this one I think I might make some of these for gifts because it's just so cute love it I'll just show you the yarn in the cake so you can see how gorgeous it is oh it's blowing out a little bit but so pretty it goes very pleasingly with my nails today <laughs> which have obviously been done especially for the podcast. My nails are getting ruined in school. Honestly, I'm washing my hands so much. I don't know why I even bother. <laughs> okay, now my final whip can barely be called a whip at all. So I've told you a few weeks ago that I was planning to start the Summer Sorrel, um, which is a pattern by Wool and Pine. I didn't print the front cover of the pattern, so let's see if I just got a picture. For a very terrible picture here that's printed really badly because our ink was running out but if you know the sorrel sweater um this is just a little summer version of it which i thought was really lovely i was really excited i printed the pattern out on june the first when it came out um i had the yarn already and last night i thought right i want a podcast tomorrow i've not got many whips so i'm going to start it but obviously it was friday night i was exhausted I didn't sit down till about eight o'clock to start it. Um, it has a eye, an eye cord cast on, which took about an hour. In fact, it did take an hour because I was watching the sewing bee and it took the whole episode of the sewing bee to cast on. Then I spent about another 45 minutes working on it and went wrong almost straight away. Now, I did that to myself because I was exhausted and it was not the time to be starting a new and complicated pattern. So <laughs> I went to bed feeling a little bit tense last night. But as soon as I got in bed, I thought about it and realised what I'd done wrong. So as you can see, I don't have much to show. Um, I don't know if you can see the eye cord cast on. If I can. Yeah, you can just about. Really nice way to cast on. It's going to be a lovely professional finish around the neckline um, but there were short rows which were a bit fiddly and then uh, some different stitches which I hadn't done before which weren't working out but I when I got into bed and thought about it I realized what I'd done wrong so this is getting ripped out and I've actually decided it's going to stay in its bag until the summer holidays my brain is not in a place to do complicated knitting right now but in the summer holidays that would be lovely I like a a nice meaty project to get my teeth into um and i'm sure it'll fly up then the yarn is looking great there already this is kiss a wookie from mr b's you can't see that i'm going to show you the cake this is like right up my street like any yarns like this kind of a pale powdery pink with pinky orange purpley speckles is my jam i've got I've had several different yarns along these kind of lines and I love it. So yeah, um, and I'm going to fade that into this one, which is Raspberry Special. And I think it's gonna be really pretty. Um, so yeah, it's not gonna be a whip for long. <laughs> but hey, it was a story to tell, wasn't it? So 
that's it for whips. Um, I have some plans for knitting because obviously I need to cast some things on. I have got my two blankets as well, which I'm picking up every now and again. Bit of a palette cleanser in between projects. Uh, my first planned um, cast on is a new shawl. I meant to print the pattern, I forgot. It was launched yesterday. It's by my friend uh, Joe from Flock, who is um, Joanna Herriot, and she has just launched a, a shawl pattern called Crest of a Wave, and it's beautiful, really lacy, quite big, beautiful shawl. Um, but it actually only uses one skein of yarn. I was really excited when I saw it on the pattern because it means I can use my much treasured skein of Amy's sweater that I bought in Paris from La Bianna May. Um, I think this will be absolutely perfect. Again, this is kind of me in a yarn grey with like neon -y speckles of all different colours. I love it. Um, so yes, that's probably going to be one of my next cast-ons. And I think even though it's a lacy project, I think it's going to be quite easy because it's quite repetitive and lovely. So I think I might cast that on today. Um, then I'll show you my acquisitions and I'll explain the other uh, plans I've got through that. So my first acquisition is a really lovely gift from a friend. So I'm sure lots of you know Nikki, who is Clara Pegarty on Instagram. And she has the lovely Sheep and Cheerful podcast, which makes me smile every time I watch it. She's amazing. She podcasts religiously once a week, which is fab, because I just look forward to seeing her every week. And you, if you watch it, you will have seen her talk about her uh, record card I'm sure she's got a fancier name for it now and I can't remember. But she's got like a record card system which she uses to keep track of her projects. So I was really excited the other day when I received this in the post. So I had a lovely card which was so cute and made me smile because Nikki is the only person in the world who calls me Bexicle. It's my nickname from her. So uh, I love that. <laughs> and I get a little dear Bexicle from her. Um, and she made me this, which is one of her little record card books made by Becky 2020 which is lovely and then basically what it is it's a system where these cards are on uh, split rings so you can um, take them apart and then you it's designed so you keep this record card in your project bag with your with your project while you knit it and then when it's finished you can add it to this book so you can always look back and say oh what what was that yarn what you know if you want to knit the pattern again what um amendments did I make to it, um, what needles did I use, that sort of thing. So you've basically got project details, you've got um, the designer, the yarn, needles, the size you made, which is something I always forget, especially if I um, if I put a project down halfway through and go back to it, I forget what size I'm knitting. And the date you started, the date you finished, and things I want to remember about this pattern. So you might put, I don't know, don't knit it again, I hated knitting it, or something like that, or, you know, some I don't know just some details about it and then the other side is blank and Nikki likes to sort of decorate these um make it really funky she usually um punches a hole and puts some of the yarn so it's like really tactile so I'm gonna have a go with that I think it'd be really fun I quite like journaling things so I'm gonna enjoy that if you go to Nikki's Etsy shop which I think is called Hugs by Clara um she sometimes has some actual physical copies of these but I think she's also got the pdfs that you can just download and print um and she does she's got these so that they're more crochet um orientated or I think she's got sewing ones weaving spinning maybe um and I know she's uh, designed a scrappy blanket one which is quite fun so yeah if you don't know Nikki do go check her out she's just wonderful I just love her she's ace Okay, now all the rest of my acquisitions are actually gifts, which is really exciting. So when I ordered um, the minis from Lovely Jen at Castle View Lions, I got a bigger than expected parcel. And bless her, she had included um, a set of minis and some stitch markers for you guys. So these are the Great Unknown rainbow minis they actually uh, coordinate with the ones I've got here so you're very lucky that I'm giving them away because I'm very tempted just to keep them <laughs> um, and they are 10 gram mini skeins there's six of them 
definitely the colours. They're so pretty. And they're on a superwash merino nylon base. There's Jen's label there, which I think is really cool. Um, and she also sent this set of really cute rainbow stitch markers that go really well. Um, really pretty loads of different colors so it's not focusing very well um so i haven't had a chance to think yet about how to go about giving these away so i might just hang on to them for a little bit and when i've got a bit more brain space maybe in the summer holidays i will organize a giveaway so watch this space for those but thank you jen that is so kind of you um and yeah, again, go and check out Jen's work because her yarns are lovely. Sorry, rustling coming out. Okay. And then one day I was at work and Claire texts me and there was loads of pictures of yarn. She was like, free yarn, uh, you know, all seconds. Which ones do you want? <laughs> um, so I already picked the Go Lightly, which I showed you just now. But there were also two skeins of DK and two of their grades. I believe it is slate and stonewash. But DK grey is always going to be useful and I don't have much DK stash so that's quite handy. And then there were three skeins of stonewash on their Hiddleston 4 ply. So and they've just there's just a couple of pale patches so that's the only reason they're seconds so I can live with that. So I'm thinking, I've been thinking for ages, I want to make another one of these. Not that I made this one. This was made by my friend Ros and give, gifted to me. I have talked about this one before. This is the Reagan by Isabel Kramer. Just a really nice drapey cardi. And I've really wanted to make one myself for quite a long time. And I think this will be perfect because that would be such a good colour. Kind of go with everything. It's almost black, so it would be really useful. So I think I might cast on one of those whether i do it soon or whether again it's a summer holiday project i don't know but i think that would be really good so thanks claire for the free yarn i love it <laughs> so i think that's me for today quite a short one but i just wanted to make sure i recorded something i wanted to show you all these finished objects before i give them away um whether or not I get another episode in now before the summer holidays, I don't know. I'm not going to uh, pile pressure on myself. The weekends feel very, very precious at the moment. So, um, And also, I'm just exhausted. It takes a lot of makeup to even look this tired. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I hope you're all keeping well. Thanks for your lovely comments and likes and views and everything. It does does really encourage me and make me smile. So, uh Keep, keep those up, please. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope you're all okay and taking care of yourselves. Um, and hopefully I will see you in a few weeks time. But until then, look after yourselves and see you soon. Bye.